Whether you're building a front-end or a back-end application, there's a big chance that you need to call a REST API at some point. So in this video, we're going to take a look at using Spring Web Client to call a REST endpoint and how we can show that data in a web UI. All right, so let's start by creating a new project. So here I'm on start.spring.io, Spring Initializer, and we're going to create a new project. I'm just going to go with the basics here. So a Maven project using Java, uh, the latest stable of Spring Boot 2.6. We're going to leave all the project metadata as it is. I'm going to switch to Java 17 because that's what I'm using. And then we're going to add some dependencies. So let's add Spring Boot DevTools. It's going to make development a little nicer. Then we're going to add Spring Reactive Web for web client. And then we're going to add Vaadin so we have an easy way to show the data that we fetch from REST endpoint. Let's click on Generate here and that will download a zip file for us. This zip is a Maven project, so we can go ahead and open that in our IDE. I'm going to use IntelliJ here, so I'm going to go to Open, I'm going to go to Downloads, and I'm going to select this uh, folder. I'm going to trust this, and once this opens, we should see that we have a plain Maven project. So here under Source Main Java, we have a Spring Boot application, and that's pretty much all that we have. All right, so let's start building this out. So what we need to do is create some kind of service that we can use then for fetching some data. The service, the, or the REST endpoint that I want to call is this JSON placeholder service. Just provides us with some test data. And what we're going to work with today are users. So we're going to hit this slash users endpoint here, and we'll get some users. And since we're working with Java, we actually want to be able to serialize these into Java objects. There's a pretty handy service called JSON uh, schema to Pojo. And if we copy this and go into the site, paste it in here, we can say that we want to generate from JSON, we want to generate Java classes. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a package here where we put all of these. So let's create a new package here. We can call this REST, for instance. And then we're going to use the same package here. So demo.rest. And the class name that we're going to have here, we're going to essentially get users. So, so we're going to have users. All right, so let's preview, see what we get. Make sure everything looks good. So we will get an address object. We will get a company object. And then we have a geo object. And I guess finally, we'll have a single user object. All right, so that looks good. Let's go ahead and download a zip file with all of these. And go ahead and open it. And if we then look here into the generated code, we'll see that we have these four classes. I'm going to drag them over to this uh, project and we're going to move them here. And if everything went well, you should not see any kind of compilation errors or anything, but you should have now all these four, uh, four classes here that we can use when we're fetching the data. All right, so that takes care of the kind of uh, data types. Next thing I'm going to do is I will create a new class here, and we're going to call this users service. And this will be a Spring Service class, so we'll annotate it. And what we'll do here is, first of all, uh, inject a web client builder. So that's something that we can use to start building out this uh, REST API call. So let's create a new constructor. And what we'll take in here is a web client dot builder. We'll call this builder, for instance. And Next, we'll use the builder to provide a base URL, which is essentially this URL right here. So the base, which is uh, same regardless of which endpoint we're calling. And we'll provide that there. And then we're going to call build. Going to extract this into a field. And we'll call this web client. So now in all the methods that we have in this service, we can go ahead and call uh, or use the same web client. 
Now that we have the client, the next thing that we're going to do is create a method that we can call to fetch users. So we'll call this public uh, user array, and we're, we can call this get users. And inside of this method, we'll return what we get back from calling the web client. And we're going to make a get request to the URI of users. So that's the path that we have here. Then we're going to retrieve the answer. And we're going to get the body to a mono. So we have one response. We don't expect a stream of responses. And we know that we're going to get a array of users back from there. And then I'm going to call block to block the operation here and return the user array. If I was working with a reactive front end of any kind, I could also return the mono so that the front end could subscribe to that. All right, so now we have a way of fetching users, but let's create a UI just so we can verify that we actually get some users and see how we can display those. So in the same uh, package here, I'm going to create a new Java class. Uh, and I'll just call this user list. And this user list is a bottom view. So I'm going to extend from a vertical layout, which allows me to lay out things vertically. I'm going to specify that this will be mapped to the context route. So just an empty route. And what I can then do is create a constructor. I can take in the user service like this. And I can create a new grid. So I'm going to use a grid component. And that will be a new grid of type user. Yep. And we'll pass in user dot class like this. All right, we need to go ahead and import this. Then when we have the grid, we're going to set the user. So we're going to call grid dot set items. And we're going to set the items based on what we get back from calling get users on the service. And finally, we're going to add this grid uh, grid to the user list view here. All right, so we'll save that. We will run the application. And since we're starting up uh, the bottom application for the first time, it will fetch some front end dependencies and stuff. So the first start will take just a moment. And once that's up and running, we should be able to see all the users uh, that we fetched from the REST API. All right, so we have the front end up and running. So let's go to localhost 8080. And sure enough, we can see some uh, code here. Now there are a couple of things that don't really work the way we might expect them to. So like for addresses, we're just seeing the package names here. And that's not exactly what we want. We also don't necessarily want to show all of these properties. So let's define which ones we actually want to see. So let's say we want to see name, phone, website, and then we can fetch some of the, let's say company name here. So let's say grid not set columns. And then we can define that we want to have name, phone, uh, website, and company name like that. So let's save that, build it. And provided that Spring uh, Boot DevTools kicks in, we should be able to go and refresh the browser here. And now we see only those. So there you have it. A simple way to use Spring Web Client to fetch data from a REST endpoint and turn those into job objects. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments below. If you have ideas for new videos, let me know in the comments as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.